Hey guys, I got a very special treat for all of you. Today we're going to be talking about Evolu- Aha! I found you! What the f***? Vice Rhino, is that you? Yes, I have returned to seek revenge after you drugged and kidnapped me. Okay, okay, before you get violent, I just wanted to say, that video was quite a good video when you say, which can be found in the description, by the way. Yeah, well, that means I get to take over your channel for a day. Let me show you what a real good video looks like. And exactly how are you going to do that? You're in my domain, which means I make the rules. And speaking of which, how did you even get in here anyway? Last I checked, only stick figures could voluntarily enter here. Oh, no, 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 my dear stick. Those rules only apply if we are where you think we are. What are you talking about? No! <laughs> Everybody. If you're a young earth creationist like me, then at some point in your time on the internet... I'm gonna go ahead and stop you right there. If you're a young earth creationist, you probably don't want to spend too much time on the internet. That is, unless you're willing to reevaluate your position once presented with evidence. Either that or you're just willfully ignorant or dishonest. If that's the case, then surf on. Or interacting with people in forums, you will have come across the term vestigial organ. Yeah, vestigial organs. You know, those things that don't make much sense if you're looking at things from the perspective of there having been a creator. My personal favorite are the remnants of penile spines on humans. If you're male, go ahead and look at your penis. Right now. I don't care if you're in the office, just do it. Odds are, you have a bunch of little white lumps at the base of the head of your penis. It is quite likely that these little white lumps are the evolutionary leftovers of penile spines, as in, most mammals have some form of spikes on their dicks, but humans do not. On an unrelated note, how are those monetization issues going, Professor? Fuck you, Rhino, I thought we were friends. Now before I tell you what a vestigial organ really is, I'm going to give you the dictionary definition of what a vestigial organ is. Ah, uh, this is one of my favorite creationist games, the one where they look at the definition of some word and then tell you why that definition is wrong. Here's the real one! Now let me tell you why this new definition can't possibly be true. Here's a tip for you. If you have a problem with a word, be it evolution or vestigial organ or what have you, use the same definition as the scientists when you're talking about it. That will stop you from being wrong right off the bat. Save the wrongness for your second sentence. According to the English Oxford Living Dictionaries, you find the following definition under the word vestigial. Biology of an organ or part of the body, degenerate, rudimentary, or atrophied, having become functionless in the course of evolution. So in other words, a vestigial organ is this. And here it comes. When a scientist who is an evolutionist or an atheist comes across an organ in a creature that they don't immediately know what the function of it is, instead of just spending more time and effort researching the organ to see if there actually is a function to it or not, they get lazy and sloppy in their work and they arbitrarily declare the organ to be leftover junk from the evolutionary process. And they put it on that shelf over there. Ah, so your claim here is that scientists don't want to have to do any extra thinking, so they label an unknown organ or structure as vestigial and just move on? Well, what about the example given that you showed on, in the dictionary definition, uh, kiwi wings? What function do you propose for those things that are obviously bird wings, but don't have the slightest chance of ever making a kiwi fly? They don't appear to use them for anything else, so what are they? Are you saying that everyone just gave up when they saw a tiny wing and the only thing left was to fall back on evolution? I rather think it's the other way around, with biologists trying to discover what purpose or function they have and only resorting to the label of vestigial when all other options have been exhausted. So, this is very similar to the concept of junk DNA, which is something you'll also have come across if you're a young earth creationist dealing with atheists and evolutionists on the internet. Junk DNA is similar in principle. There's DNA that evolutionists and atheists don't immediately know what the function of it is, so instead of spending more time and research figuring out what that function is, the evolutionists and atheists declared it to be junk DNA, leftover junk from the evolutionary process, and they once again put on the shelf, no more study is required. Well, assuming you actually do research for your videos, you might be using the wrong search term here. Next time, try non-coding DNA. See here. Uh, 
quick search for non-coding DNA in Google Scholar gives us 1.1 million results. As in 1.1 million scholarly articles, many of them being peer-reviewed publications, looking into non-coding DNA, which is sometimes colloquially called junk DNA. But you know what? I don't think you did any research before making this video, because I just searched Google Scholar for junk DNA and I got 50,600 results. So as it turns out, quite a bit of research has and continues to be done on the topic of non-coding DNA. Now, personally, I don't find the junk DNA argument to be entirely convincing, though I will admit to having used it on occasion. Uh, so yes, a large percentage of our DNA, anywhere from 60 to 90 percent, depending on who you ask, does nothing that we can see at this time. What makes sense from an evolutionary perspective would be that there are leftover genes from our past that no longer serve any function, but even if we do f someday find that every last little nucleic acid in our body has some crucial function, that wouldn't do anything to cripple evolution. This is one of those things that as long as it's out there, it kind of makes creationism look bad. But should it go away, it still doesn't do anything close to providing evidence for creationism, it'll just be one less piece of evidence against it. And this whole thing is hilarious because it's evolutionists and atheists who will tell young earth creationists like me that young earth creationism halts scientific inquiry because when the creationist comes across something in nature that they don't immediately know what the natural explanation of is, they will immediately jump to God did it and call this the God of the gaps fallacy. Yep, that's a pretty big complaint. I mean, if we just accept that God did it and stop looking, it will halt scientific progress. It has happened in the past, and there is no reason to think that it wouldn't also happen in the future. This complaint from evolutionists and atheists, well, they, they say it like a complaint, but it's really an argument. This argument from evolutionists and atheists is completely hypocritical in nature because they do the same thing. Well, I've already shown that that's not really the case for non-coding DNA, but let's take a look at vestigial now, shall we? Hmm, looks like for the phrase vestigial structure there are about 69,200 results. Not as impressive as the 1.1 million for non-coding DNA, but still quite a bit. But there do seem to be quite a few old ones though, I mean right there on the front page we have two hits from the 90s, one from the 70s, and one all the way back from 1923, so... Let's restrict our search to 2014 and on, just to make sure they're still at it. Look at that, 14,600 results. So your claim that we just label something vestigial and call it a day seems to be somewhat erroneous. When they come across an organ in a creature, or DNA, that they don't immediately know what the function of it is, instead of spending more time and research figuring out what that function is, or ruling out the possibility of any function, they will arbitrarily declare that this thing is leftover junk from the evolutionary process and then file it away and never deal with it again. Except for the 14,600 times that they have dealt with it since 2014. I think here would actually be a good place to point out that vestigial doesn't always mean the structure is completely useless. Often evolution will use a structure that already exists to perform a new function rather than waste resources developing a function from scratch. For instance, the whale pelvis is obviously no longer used as an attachment point for legs, it's a vestige of their land-dwelling ancestors. I think it's safe to say that it's vestigial. But it is not useless, it anchors the muscles that the male whales use for maneuvering their penises. In a study in 2014, they actually found that the pelvis bones and cetaceans are actually subject to sexual selection, the first time it has been found that sexual selection can have an effect on the internal anatomy controlling male genitalia. I also like the article on iflscience.com about it. They have one of the researchers quoted as saying, It's like someone operating a trick kite where you pull two strings and pulling left and right makes it go in a loop-de-loop. -loop. So yes, these bones do have a purpose. That does not stop them from also being vestigial. And please note, the penis article was only published a couple years ago, suggesting that these vestigial structures are still being researched and studied. Also, I don't normally talk about penises as much as I have today. PENIS! This is called evolutioning the gaps. Ooh, sick burn. I'd like to take some time now to thank Professor Stick for being so easy to lock up. I'll let you out now. It was fun hijacking your channel. I hope to do it again someday. But until then, fare thee well. Oh, I finally escaped. Thank you to Vice Rhino for that excellent video. If you liked what you saw, definitely go down to the link in the description to check him out. His channel is full of fantastic videos that promote science and reasoning, and I couldn't recommend him enough. You won't regret it.
What are you still doing here? Go check out Vice Rhino already. What? You think this is to just make the video over 10 minutes? Don't be silly.